Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm getting the Dog Tag Mastery for the LSAT Light Machine Gun. It means I need 500 kills and frankly I was a few hundred kills away from getting that when I started. So I had my work cut out for me with this unfortunate machine gun. This thing just fires so slow it's why I really haven't used it because it's actually tied with the Type 88 and QBB95 for the lowest damage output per second machine guns. That's the slowest time to kill out of any of the machine guns available. Now I do believe that any player who really knows their tactics, their techniques, has good aiming, can do well with pretty much any weapon in the game, and the LSAT being one of my least favorite guns in the game, uh, I was able to do pretty darn well this round with it. It kind of goes to show that as long as you know the strengths and weaknesses of your weapon, you can sort of play to those strengths and weaknesses and set yourself up in situations. Don't try and go long range uh, while standing up with one of these inaccurate machine guns. It's just not going to fare well. Try and get in close. Try and take advantage of the fact that you don't have to reload. So if you're having a firefight with a few guys, you kind of get the idea that some of them are probably reloading you can actually take advantage of that opening run around the corner uh, and the fact that you can with extended mags use 200 rounds with the LSAT really does uh, give this an advantage for taking on multiple enemies as long as you have the drop on them now in this particular clip here I was able to actually flank around and get into the enemy spawn area and you know what I remember that I have C4 and that's gonna come into play here while up on top of hotel because I actually pretty much run out of ammo with the LSAT I gotta do the reload and it's got that long reload time and you'll see here this guy jumps around the corner gotta switch to the sidearm to deal with him I realize I don't have time to reload the primary right there so I know I'm going to need to use whatever I have at my disposal to hold these guys off. I know they're coming up these stairs to start throwing down C4. Catch a bit of splash damage on there. I'm actually lucky I didn't die from that C4 detonation. Now finally have enough time to go for the reload. But you know what? That C4 on the stairs seemed to work so well. I may as well give it another try. Again, keep getting people as they come up the stairs here. Not the most original tactic in the world. But you know what? For my situation right now, it's actually working quite well. The thing I like so much about this map is that it really does have lanes and areas, basically spawn locations for the teams once they start rotating around the map. And I'm in the middle of the enemy spawn location and they gotta get me out of here otherwise I'm gonna continue to cause nothing but havoc over here. The problem is is that I'm becoming a very costly problem for them right now as they just keep sacrificing one guy after another trying to get me off this roof. And here we go, I'm hip firing this guy for the final kill here and I get sniped. Not a bad little 19 kill streak with the LSAT and some C4. So even though I'm trying to get the LSAT mastery dog tags, again, if you want to stay alive, if you want to maximize your kills, you're definitely going to have to use whatever tools you have at your disposal. Again, the benefit of having so many rounds in a magazine is that you can just hose people down like I did there. That was a four-man spray in the beginning of a round. Now, as for specking out this weapon, I have the Cobra sight on here, obviously. I have extended mags, so I can run with 200 rounds in a magazine don't have to worry about reloading at all then I have the foregrip on here because this gun although it has really bad aiming down sight accuracy of 0.5 as I mentioned earlier and the foregrip makes that even worse the side to side recoil on this weapon is really abysmal it has 0.3 pull left 0.3 I'm sorry 0.35 pull left 0.35 pull right and a 0.4 uh, vertical recoil so this thing just has bad recoil in general it's going to be hard to control so if I can minimize that in any way possible then I'm going to again you see me taking advantage of the C4 a lot I really don't like to be that guy who just chucks C4 everywhere because I find it to be one of those things that kind of anybody can do you know throwing C4 over a ledge to get a, a cheap kill like that but again, my weapon is so ineffective that I feel like that's, in many situations, one of my more useful tools. And I can see why a lot of people do that, especially if you're perhaps not the quickest player in the world or the best gunfighter out there. C4 is still an incredibly powerful tool, so as a support player, it's just something that you're going to always want to have at the ready and this guy here in the distance again it's just taking way too long to take him down it really shows the LSAT's effectiveness at range if you're not using something like a bipod it's something that you just want to stick to close quarters to medium range at worst and definitely get yourself into positions where people are not going to be looking directly at you like that guy in the square there he wasn't looking for me now I'm in the stairway here I know anybody walking out here isn't going to be looking directly up the stairs initially so you have to take on sort of a offensive and then quickly defensive style of gameplay 
When you go into your offensive mode, it's usually to get to a new bit of cover. Then you want to hang out in that bit of cover, suppress guys, sort of lure them into your trap, and take them out in a place that's advantageous to you. You don't want to be that guy who's running and gunning all the time with the LSAT. You're going to lose a lot of firefights. Anybody who brings their up, gun up to shoot at you at the same time that you bring your gun up to shoot at them, you're going to lose that firefight. Shooting at 650 rounds per second means that probably 90-95% of the players on the field have weapons that shoot faster than yours that out damage yours. So you need that first fire advantage. Target prioritization, you'll notice when I come around here I switch targets to the guy who's looking at me and then drop the guy who's got his back turned. This is one of the harder things to do I think in any first person shooter. When you see guys, you immediately like zone on to one, you start shooting at him till he's dead and then you move on to the next one. It's very hard to sort of take half a second there to pick the right target to shoot at. If you shoot at the guy or the three guys who've got their back turned at you, and you don't shoot at the guy who's actually facing you, then you're gonna die, because that guy's gonna shoot you down. And even though it seems like perfect common sense, like many things in life that are very simple in nature, they're very hard to actually pull off when you're in the moment. You just gotta take that extra split second to think, prioritize your targets, and it'll keep you alive a lot longer. Especially with a weapon like this, you absolutely need to prioritize. If you have something that's absolutely crazy, like an M5K, or an AEK in close quarters, sometimes you can just sort of get lucky, spray the wrong guy first and move on to the guy who's actually facing you, and because your weapon does such great damage, you'll make it through it. Using a gun like the LSAT, you're really gonna have to make sure you're playing uh, perfectly. Your gameplay has gotta be top notch in order for you to actually get some decent kills, move around the map and take some objectives, or just push flanks. You'll notice that my squad perk is extra suppression, which I felt was very necessary for this weapon. I can take whatever advantages I can get in a firefight. Suppressing my target more than he can suppress me It's definitely one of those. I'm kind of proud of that little C4 kill there. Lured him right into the trap. Now again, I've pushed around into the hotel side uh, of the map and the enemy is still spawning here. I like these little stairwells here because they're dark. You don't always expect to see people here. You have a lot of angles that you can work to get good cover. And as you can see, the enemy is just sort of spawning in this building back here. So I have a lot of options for dishing out the damage. Yay for revives on Team Deathmatch is something that you don't necessarily get a lot, but uh, they're certainly valuable to have. Very happy to have teammates there. Now I could kit switch and revive my squad mate, but I'm kind of on a mission here with the LSAT. Uh, and unfortunately squad mates can't spawn on you, so now I'm the last guy up here and I'm reverting to some C4 tactics there to try and get some easy kills as they come up the stairs. Luckily a teammate came up here and I just figured that you can like throw C4 right over the side of here which makes it extra useful. See the guys way down there, I mean look at this angle, there's no way that that guy is going to be ready for that specific angle right there. Again, almost killing myself with the splash damage on the C4. I love this little maneuver here. You see the guys come up the stairs and then you just jump over right behind them and they're like, where the heck did that guy come from? It's a cheap little thing you can do, but uh, it certainly does work, especially when you're playing the, the king of the hill, the last man standing game up on top of the hotel. Now I know I've gotta be close to that 500 kill uh, mark here and sure enough that guy right there gets me the LSAT service star. I'm thinking this is it This is gonna be 500 sure enough. There's the LSAT mastery dog tag Which is nice because it's almost the end of the round so that works out because I'm kind of tired of using this weapon I kept running into this one player that used the MTAR and even though I started firing on him first almost every single time He would win that firefight just because of the damage he was able to dish out with an MTAR versus an LSAT that wraps it up for this mastery dog tag video. I'm running out of guns to master, and speaking of which, I've got the remaining guns listed in the video description, so let me know in the comments which weapon you'd like me to do next. Thanks for watching, guys, and based on the scoreboard there, you can see that even a bad gun can do well as long as you're playing intelligently, using it to its advantages. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.